Tonight we are making gnocchi. I've got potatoes that I've roasted off. You can um, boil these if you really want to. I like to roast them, it gives it a different flavor. With, along with that I have an egg and I have two cups of flour and a little bit of salt. A lot of people will use a ricer for this. I don't have a ricer so I'm making do and, and changing stuff around. Instead I'm going to use my food processor and I'm, I'm going to use the shedding or the shredding blade to actually grind these up to make them uh, capable of making gnocchi with. So, <clears throat> we'll grab one, throw the lid on. And, take a look at what it looks like. Nice and ready to be made into gnocchi. It'll we'll look a little shredded, but that's going to mix up really nice. About like how it would look with a ricer. Okay, we're, we're going to make the pasta now. Alright, flour on top. If you had noticed, I actually made a well in there. Make sure everything's covered. <clears throat> Throw in the egg. Just like making regular pasta, we're going to work that in a little bit. Get that to work in. So it doesn't go running all over the place. Like so. Then we're going to get a little bit dirty. Start working all this stuff together. And it is going to be gooey. It's because potatoes are going to be sticky and that egg's going to be sticky. So we'll just keep working that flour into it. You notice it's getting a little sticky to your hands. You can use flour to break it up a little bit. Like that. Always have your bench knife handy. <clears throat> Main thing you want to do is just work this until it comes together, just like you would with a normal with a all flour and egg pasta. Together already. You know what I forgot? Pinch of salt. We'll put that in. Oh. You don't want to lose any of the stuff that gets on your hands because that's moisture you're going to want for the for the pasta itself. Always just work that back into it. Once it comes together and you got it to where it's not like sticking all over, and it is going to stick no matter what you do. You, otherwise, you're just going to sit here adding flour all day. About two cups is really about the most you want. Have some extra flour sitting aside because you're going to want to roll it out and you don't want it to stick to your board or stick to your counter. You want it to just be sticky enough that you can get the shape out with it, like so. You got your shape, cut out your little dumpling, like so. Come over to the pot of boiling water, roll it off your spoon, just like the, or off your fork. It gets the tines in it, and it's going to drop right to the bottom. When these float, that's when they're done. Always have a a uh, cold bath right next to it so once they're cooked you can throw them in there to stop the cooking process. We're about to see this one come up. It does not take them long. This one's already starting to move around. Not quite floating yet. It's getting there. But not quite there yet. Oh. Take a quick look at it. Oh, yeah, Nice little dumpling hot but give it a second or two more and we'll throw it in the cold bath and in that, in that time frame we're gonna actually start working on these get all this cut out and cooked off 
and finish it off from there. Okay, so you, you after you've made all that milk, you're probably wondering what you can do with it. So instead of you could just do a regular tomato sauce, works out, or you can do something a little different. I got a little uh, green onion and garlic. So I'll take that for a second. Add in a little bit of chopped butter, or chopped butter, chopped bacon. Let that saute for a second. Add in a little gnocchi. That'll crisp it up a little bit. It'll start to brown. Add a little salt. Then we're going to finish it nice and hot with butter. Pretty simple, nice and tasty. Doesn't take a lot of effort other than making the gnocchi. But you got dinner right there. And in the end, looks a little bit like that. And you can finish it off with a little bit of cheese. Nice Asiago or Parmesan would be great on that.